Lesson 17, I will use visual mod models to add and subtract two fractions with the same units. All right, so today we're not going to write anything in our journal. We're going to go ahead and just skip right to our problem set today because I think most of the learning that we have to do, we can just do it right there. All right, so in your problem set, I want you to take a look at your very first set of directions. It says use the following three fractions to write two addition, or excuse me, two subtraction and two addition number sentences. So basically it's asking us to create fact families with these fractions. So what we're going to do is we're going to begin by drawing a number bond. Okay, which of these fractions is the largest? Well, that would be two fifths, or excuse me, ten fifths. So let's put ten fifths at the top. All right, then we can take eight fifths and we can take two fifths as the other two parts because eight fifths plus two fifths equals ten fifths. So that can be our two addition sentences. We can take a look. These two added together equal ten fifths. So I've got eight fifths plus two fifths. Yes. Okay, so eight fifths plus two fifths equals ten fifths. That's one addition sentence. And then we can switch these around and say two fifths plus eight fifths equals ten fifths. That's our two addition sentences. Now when you take a look at our number bond, if we take eight fifths away from ten fifths, then that's going to leave two fifths. So let's say ten fifths minus eight fifths equals two fifths. And then we can do the same thing here. Ten fifths minus two fifths equals eight fifths. And now we have two addition sentences and two subtraction sentences. All right, so let's do the same thing here. Which of these fractions is the greatest? That would be 15 eighths. So we're going to put 15 eighths at the top, and then we're going to use our two other fractions to put together to make 15 eighths. So I've got 7 eighths, and I've got 8 eighths. So let's see if we can't make two addition sentences and two subtraction sentences. Let's start with the easier, the addition. So we know if we put these two together, we get 15 eighths. So we'll start with 7 eighths plus 8 eighths equals 15 eighths. And then we'll say 8 eighths plus 7 eighths equals 15 eighths. So all we did was just take these two and turn them around. So we've got two addition sentences. Now for our subtraction, we're going to start with our large number, which is 15 eighths. If I take 7 eighths away from 15 eighths, that's going to leave 8 eighths. Likewise, if I start with 15 eighths and I take away 8 eighths, that's going to leave 7 eighths. So I have two addition sentences and two subtraction sentences. This is just like a fact family that you would do in addition or subtraction whenever you are using whole numbers. It's the same thing when we use fractions. All right, so let's take a look at number two. Now we're going to model each subtraction problem with a number line and solve by counting up and subtracting. So I really like this strategy. So a lot of times when you subtract, you start at the small number and you count up, or sometimes you just basically subtract. So today we're going to try both, both ways. You can see right here they started with subtraction. They changed one whole to four-fourths, and they subtracted three-fourths, which equals one-fourth. And then this would be the subtracting. And then using the number line, they use the counting up method. So look at what they did here. So I'm going to label this counting up. They started at the small number, which is 3 fourths, and they said, well, what would it take for me to get from 3 fourths to 1 whole or 4 fourths? Well, I would have to add 1 fourth. So they got the same answer. 1 minus 3 fourths equals 1 fourth. They did this way by subtracting and this way by counting up. All right, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to start by subtracting. All right, so I've got 1 whole. If I'm taking away tenths, I'm going to take my hoe and I'm going to convert it to 10 tenths, which is the same thing as one hoe. And I'm going to subtract 8 tenths, which gives me 2 tenths. So this is just basic subtraction. Okay. Now, the next strategy that we're going to use is we're going to use the counting up strategy, strategy, strategy with G with a number. And we're going to start with 0. And then I'm going to call this 10 tenths, which is the same thing as 1 whole. Now I have to divide this into 10 parts. So I'm going to start by dividing it in half. And then I'm going to divide each half into fifths. That means I draw four lines. 1, 2, 3, 4, 
one, two, three, four. Now I have tenths. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten parts. So this would be five tenths, and then every one of these would be a tenth. So I'm right here at eight tenths. Five tenths, six tenths, seven tenths, eight tenths. And I'm trying to figure out how many tenths does it take to get to one whole. Well, it takes two tenths. So one minus eight tenths equals two tenths. I got the same answer here as I got here. So this is the subtraction method and this is the counting up method. They both work equally well. Now you might be saying to yourself, why are we even bothering with this counting up method? It definitely takes longer than the subtracting method. And I would say that in these cases of these subtraction problems, the subtracting method is the most efficient. But counting up can definitely work in other situations. So let's continue to practice both strategies because I promise you the counting up strategy will come in handy in some lessons in the future. All right, so let's start with the subtraction strategy. So I've got one whole minus three fifths. So let's change the one whole to five out of five, which is the same as one whole, minus three out of five, which equals two fifths. That is just regular subtraction. Now let's practice the counting up strategy. So we're going to start with a number line from zero to one. And instead of putting one, I'm going to put five fifths. I'm going to divide this into five parts by drawing four lines. And now I have one fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths, five fifths. So I'm going to start at three fifths. And I'm going to say, how much do I have to add to three fifths to get to one whole? And that would be two fifths. So I have the same answer here as I have here. Why don't you try to do D by yourself? See if you can practice both strategies by pausing the video, try to do them by yourself, and then come back. If you get stuck, you can always press play, and so I can help you walk you through the problem that you, the parts that you don't understand. All right, so hopefully you paused the video and you were able to complete both of these problems by yourself. Now let's check to see that you did them correctly. So one whole would be the same as eight out of eight minus five out of eight, which equals three a. So that's subtraction. Now we're going to use the counting up strategy. So I'm going to start with zero, and instead of one whole, I'm going to label this eight ace, and I'm going to divide this into eight parts. So the first thing I'm going to do is divide it into four parts, and then divide each fourth in half, and that will give me eighths. So I'm going to say one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths, and I want to figure out what it takes to get from five eighths to eight eighths, and the answer is three eighths. So you get the same answer here as you get here. All right, so let's continue. So now we're going to find the difference in two ways. Using number bonds to decompose the whole, part A has been completed for you. So you can take a look right here and you can see we had a mixed number, one and two fifths, which is the same as five fifths and two fifths minus four fifths. <clears throat> now they did this two different ways. Here's what they did. They took this improper or this mixed number and they turned it into an improper fraction by adding both of these together and that gave them seven fifths. And then they took seven fifths minus four fifths, which equals three fifths. Now, here's another strategy. Over here, they still decomposed five fifths and two fifths, but they took this four fifths away from five fifths. Okay? And then they added the two fifths. So here, they added the two-fifths first and then subtracted. Here, they subtracted and then added the two-fifths. Okay, that may seem a little bit confusing, but I want you to follow with me. All right, so first of all, let's take this mixed number and let's turn it into an improper fraction. So we would have six out of six and three out of six. So here's my one and my three-six. So the first strategy is to take six sixes and I'm going to add the three six, and that's going to make nine sixes. Now I've got nine six, and I'm going to take away four six. Oops, that should just be a subtraction sign there. I'm going to subtract four six, which is going to equal five sixes. All right, now in the second strategy, I'm going to still start with my whole number, which is six sixes, but I'm going to subtract first. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract four six, which leaves two six. Now I'm going to add 
the three sixes in and I still get five sixes. So I'll get five six here and five six here. It all hinges around this three sixes. In the first strategy, I added the three sixes first. In the second strategy, I added the three sixes second, but I still added it. All right, so let's try C. So let's go ahead and decompose this mixed number into eight out of eight and six out of eight. So we have one whole and six eighths. Now in the first strategy, we're going to add the six eighths first and then subtract. So eight eighths plus six eighths equals 14 eighths. So now I have one and six eighths and I changed it to 14 eighths. So now it is an improper fraction and I'm just going to subtract seven eighths which equals seven eighths. So here's my answer. Now in this strategy, instead of making this an improper fraction, I'm going to go ahead and take the seven eighths away from the whole. So I'm going to say eight eighths minus seven eighths leaves me with one eighth. Now I'm going to add the six eighths and I get seven eighths. So in the second strategy, I waited and added the six eighths at the end. In the first strategy, I added it at the beginning. All right, let's try two more. All right, so I'm gonna take this mixed number, which is 10 tenths and one tenth. Okay, so first I'm going to add these two together. 10 tenths plus one tenth equals 11 tenth. So here's my one and one tenth. I just changed it to an improper fraction. Now I'm gonna subtract seven tenths and the answer is four tenths. Okay, now I'm going to do the same problem, but instead of adding the one tenth, I'm going to go ahead and take the seven tenths away from ten tenths first, and that leaves three tenths. Now I'm going to add the one tenth, and I still get four tenths. Okay, if this is making sense to you, go ahead and pause the video and try to do this one all by yourself. Do as much of it as you can. And if you get stuck, you can always press play and I can help you finish it or hopefully you can get through the whole entire problem and then you can just check. All right, so I've got 12 twelfths and three twelfths because here's my one whole, 12 out of 12, and here's three twelfths. So in my first way, I'm gonna go ahead and add the three twelfths in first which gives me 15 twelfths. Now I'm going to subtract six twelfths and that leaves nine twelfths, okay? Now in the second way, I'm gonna hold off on adding this three twelfths at the end and I'm going to subtract six twelfths first, which gives me six twelfths. Now I'm going to add in the three twelfths and I still get nine twelfths. Okay, so in this lesson we added and we subtracted fractions several times and we did it in a couple of different ways. So I want you to try to do this on your own when you do your exit slip and you can always come back to your problem set if you need some help.